In previous years, I couldn't go more than 50 miles away from my house without bringing basically a full cargo van full of tech gear just to fulfill my every tech desire because, well, I'm crazy. But I've just gotten back from vacation and I think I've found the perfect travel tech carry for me. And actually, I just got back from two trips. One was a road trip and one was flying out to another state and back. So I've had a good experience with this set of tech. So let's take a look at what got me by for the last two weeks. And I guess we should just start off with the bag itself, which I'm not sure it's a recommendation, but this is just a Swiss gear backpack that I bought with a 15 inch MacBook Pro in 2009, and I'm still using it. It's fine, but I could probably use a new backpack. So if you know any good ones, let me know. But over the last 13 years or so, it's held up pretty well. I got a little bit of crack in the handle here, but all the zippers still function. All the padding is still there. It just doesn't stand up on its own like it used to, but overall it's been a pretty good backpack for the last 13 years. But what is inside the backpack is what matters most. And the first thing that I used on my tech travel was my iPad mini sixth generation. I found that whether you're traveling in the passenger seat of a car and you're just trying to check email or scroll through Twitter or watch a couple of YouTube videos, or you're sitting in an airplane seat and you wanna watch a movie on a two and a half hour flight, then the iPad mini is the perfect little travel video media consumption device for small cramped areas. The screen is obviously much larger than you have with a phone, but it's not a big bulky device. And when you stick it in the Apple folio case, which I think this is the electric orange, this guy just sits up and will display a movie on an airplane tray table without any worry about the person in front of you putting their seat back and crushing your laptop or bending your iPad in ways that you don't want it to bend if you have a larger iPad. And because this is an iPad running iPad OS, you can download the apps and then you can download movies and TV shows or whatever else and have them for offline use on an airplane or if you don't have good cellular signal while driving between cities and towns. And the small size helps too during landing and takeoff when you can't even use a tray table on an airplane. So overall, I find the iPad mini six to be the perfect little travel movie watching device. Now this was the first real vacation that I've taken in some time and I had no intention on working, but if the need arises, which it did once or twice, I still needed a laptop to be able to log into some of my work stuff to get some things done. And so for that, I took the brand new M2 MacBook Air. This thing is incredibly light in your backpack at 2.7 pounds. You barely feel it with everything else you probably have in there. And even though I didn't want to open it up and do a little bit of work, I had to, but that's fine because I got to see the brand new design. I love the design of the new M2 MacBook Air. It's very reminiscent of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros and it looks amazing. It's just a joy to open up and see that larger display with the thinner bezels the bigger keyboard keys and the bigger trackpad is just so cool in a device that's just so slim and light. And even though I really did not want to use the MacBook Air because I was on vacation, I know that no matter what came up, this MacBook Air would help me resolve any issues for work or for personal stuff. I can get everything done I need with the M2 MacBook Air. And you can see that in my M2 MacBook Air review. And other than that, you know what a MacBook is, so there you go. Now between activities or in the evenings when you're chilling out at your hotel room, I like to hang out with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. The 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the iPad Magic Keyboard is my go-to device when I'm hanging out in a hotel room waiting to go to the next thing or getting ready for bed. I almost exclusively use the larger iPad with the iPad Magic Keyboard just because I prefer if I have to type anything or do a bit of surfing, I prefer the physical keys compared to the virtual keyboard on the larger displays. And of course the trackpad's nice too. Now when I'm laying in bed, I like to use the iPad to watch a movie or TV show on Hulu, Netflix or whatever. And the Magic Keyboard of course holds the iPad up. The screen is large and bright and it has amazing speakers that absolutely fill up a hotel room. But before I get in bed is where the real magic happens. And that is when I'm playing Call of Duty. Yes, I've pointed this out in a number of previous videos that I enjoy playing Call of Duty Mobile with an Xbox controller. And I prefer the Xbox controller over the PlayStation controller simply because the AA batteries. With the PlayStation controller, I found that I was having to charge it basically once a week. With the Xbox controller and AA batteries, I change them out every couple of months. I get a lot more play time out of the batteries in the Xbox controller and I spend less time dealing with having to charge another battery. You can of course use rechargeable batteries, which I do recommend, but you don't have to. 
There's nothing more relaxing than sitting in a hotel room and playing Call of Duty Mobile on a large screen iPad with an Xbox controller and just destroying every kid out there playing with the touch screen on their phones. Now, before I get to the devices in my bag that charges all my other devices, I wanna talk about the devices I carry on my person. And first up, I have my Apple Watch Series 7. This is the 45 millimeter stainless steel graphite color. And it works pretty good. I like to have this watch for notifications when my phone's not in my hand. And of course, for activity tracking and step tracking and all that kind of stuff. And just quick access to messages or emails or calendar events and the temperature, because why not? Now what's different compared to my everyday regular carry is that for these trips, I actually picked up a pair of AirPods Pro. Normally I use the third generation AirPods, but because I was flying on one of these trips, I decided, you know what? I wanted to try the AirPods Pro again with noise cancellation. And to my surprise, these AirPods Pro were amazing on the plane. They did such a good job of canceling out all of that engine noise. And I'm just really impressed by these. Previously, I've taken the AirPods Max, but these were so much less bulky and cumbersome on my head and in my bag that unless I'm flying overseas, I don't see myself taking anything but these AirPods Pro again. For about a three hour flight, they were incredibly comfortable the whole time. They never ran out of battery and I was able to watch three different hour long shows. And of course I have my iPhone 13 Pro. This is the 13 Pro in Sierra Blue and I am rocking the I don't know what color case it is, but the Apple silicone MagSafe case. And this phone I like because it has the three different cameras, the wide, ultra wide, and the 3X zoom lens. And of course the battery life is not too bad either. I find that the 13 Pro is kind of the Goldilocks of the iPhones at the moment, right? You get all of the features of the cameras, you get a good battery, you get a good size screen, but it's not way too big and it's not lacking or missing any features. And despite being almost a year old, the battery on the iPhone 13 Pro held up pretty well, but there was a couple of days where I needed a little bit of a boost in battery. So that's where all this crap left over in my bag comes. And this is all the rest of the crap I need to just power all my other devices, starting with the Apple MagSafe power pack thing. Yes, there are other MagSafe compatible battery packs out there, but I just find that this one is simple and clean and small and it, it works fine. It gives me about another 60 to 80% battery for my iPhone 13 Pro. And this battery pack does of course work really well with the Apple silicone case. It just attaches to the back and you can put it in your pocket or keep it in a bag or whatever and just take it off when you no longer need it. And actually, if you see my previous video, I've been using this Rhino Shield bumper case for the last few weeks and I really like it a lot. And it works really well with the Apple MagSafe battery pack. It actually just sits right inside the case of the phone it doesn't go anywhere, it's actually super solid. Let me show you real quick. So with this bumper case, you can actually stick this MagSafe battery pack right in there and it has even more stability. It can't just slide off like it can with the phone itself or with the Apple silicone case. This MagSafe battery pack just sits completely snugly inside this case and it's awesome. Now, the only reason I did not use the bumper case on this trip is because I like to use the MagSafe Duo Charger when I travel. It's really convenient to be able to charge your iPhone and your Apple Watch or AirPods and Apple Watch at the same time with one cable. And I was super skeptical about this device when it was first announced being way too expensive and way too cheap looking, but oh my gosh, is this thing actually convenient. It is so nice to be able to just drop your phone on there and drop your watch on there and you are charging and ready to go. And when you're getting ready for work in the morning or whatever, you can just drop your AirPods on if those need a little bit of a charge as well. Now, the only downside to this MagSafe Duo charger besides the price and apparently some potential for yellowing of this white material is that it still uses lightning. So I still have to take a lightning cable with me. So I connect the lightning cable to the MagSafe Duo charger and I connect it to the new dual 35 or 36 watt Apple charger. And this guy is actually pretty nice. I like it a lot. Now I bought the version of this dual charger that has the ports on the bottom or top, I guess, depending on how you plug this guy in. And that allows me to, again, charge my phone and my Apple watch at the same time. And then I can connect another USB-C connection to the bottom of this dual charger and actually charge up my MacBook Air or my iPad Pro or my iPad mini covering all of my bases. And so I think this is a pretty simple setup with this dual port USB-C charger from Apple, the MagSafe Duo charger for iPhone and AirPods, a lightning cable and a USB-C cable. And with just those devices, I can charge everything else. So I think that's about it for my travel tech carry. It's not a bad little setup. I got my chargers, I got my phone, 
I got my portable media device. I got my portable gaming device, my gaming slash video watching device. And if I really, really, really need to, my get crap done device. So that's it. That's my travel tech carry for 2022. It's slimmed down from what it used to be. But what do you guys think? I'm really curious. Do you guys have any suggestions for a new backpack for me? Since this one's 13 years old, I'd love to know what it is in the comments below. Also, if you want to know how the M2 MacBook Air holds up in real world use for regular people, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.